Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Surviving Scientology Radio with your host, Jeffrey Augustine. Today, we have a Dr. Jeff Wassel. Dr. Jeff, welcome to the show. Hello, Jeffrey. Good to be with you, as always. Now, Jeff, you're an expert on financial matters. Hey, can you give our, our, our listeners a little bit of your background? Um, my discipline was in financial crime. I have a PhD at, from the London School of Economics, and actually it's more on the, the computer security side, but with a focus on uh, countering the financing of terror, anti-money laundering, risk, fraud, and all the kind of the ancillary stuff that goes into that for both banks, governments, and other interested parties. And before that, I had did a couple masters and around the electronic health record with the NHS and also governance, risk, and compliance in that area. So, compliance is kind of my bailiwick in the way that uh, money moves, be it licitly or illicitly. Which which makes you a friend of the Scientology Money Project. We've been talking for many years. Yes, and we have. What I want to tell our listeners about, and be advised, Office of Special Affairs, you should listen very carefully to this podcast. Now, Indeed. what Dr. Wassel and I have designed is called the Wassel Augustine Scientology Refund Repayment Fraud Survey. Dr. Wassel, tell our listeners what our refund repayment fraud survey is about and what we're, what kind of data we're going to be looking for. So those of us that have been watching the church for quite some time uh, notice that it's very hard to quantify behavior in the church. Uh, anywhere from number of members, the amount of liquid capital that they have, the amount of offshore entities they may have. I mean, you know, David McCab- uh, COB's salary. I mean, all kinds of stuff. The church is very, very secretive about money. And one of the things that comes up, certainly, that's hit the news recently is the Luis Garcia suit, which is about the fraudulent use of donations by the church, as well as uh, just very malicious and uh, aggressive behavior when it comes to implementing their refund policy that they make a very big thing about oh yes you know we have the international justice uh, process that you can apply as a Scientologist in good standing to get your money but uh, numerous anecdotal stories and people that are in that have also tried to use this process have testified to the fact that it's rubbish it's basically nothing more than lip service uh, pretty much is a, a uh, a way to uh, ensure that they have some kind of air cover due to the provisos of the 93 IRS agreement. So what we decided to do is sit down and figure out uh, using kind of an academic approach in creating what's called an instrument, a, a test instrument, or in this case a survey instrument, to try and quantify the amount of money that the church owes people. And that is in the terms of repayments or refunds based on monies on account. And anybody that's ever done business with the church uh, for services knows that you're hit up immediately by a reg or some other in- individual in the church to get money on account just before before you even sign up for anything. They want money in the bank that shows that you're making some type of fiduciary commitment to entertain the services and or products would have you Scientology. And that point, Jeff, during my interview with Leah Remini, she made it very clear, as have so many others, that Scientology is a pay-as-you-go religion. They must be paid before services begin. And if money runs out, services stop. It's a pay-as-you-go service. Just to clarify for our new new Scientology watchers who are listening, you can get a refund within 90 days of taking a service for which you're dissatisfied. However, as a condition of getting a refund, you are expelled from the church and given a suppressive person to clarify because it's criminal under L. Ron Hubbard's code to ask for a refund. A repayment is a different term. That means putting money on account toward future services. So in other words, Jeff, if you were a a new Scientologist and I were a Scientology salesperson called a registrar or a reg, I would say, Jeff, you need to flow power toward your bridge. So although you can't pay the 50,000 right now, why don't you put 10,000 on account? and then put 5000 on account every couple months. And then when you get 50000 you can start the grades up to clear, right? They say money on account. It makes it sound like there's a bank account that belongs to you, doesn't it? Absolutely. Not true. The contract you sign when you donate says it's an unconditional donation. The pith of the matter, Dr. Wassel, is that the church, when it applied for its 501c3 tax exemption from the United States Inter 
Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, they said, quote, the church's refund policy is exceedingly fair. If someone isn't happy with Scientology, which is a very small minority of people, he simply has to make a proper request for his donations back, agree to go forego further services, and his donations will be returned, unquote. The reality is, I have a stack of letters from Gary Soder. I did a data collection project on him. Gary Soder is a Scientology attorney who sends letters out and says, uh, the church is under no obligation. There's no law in the U.S. that requires us to give you your money back. What you have is a donation, and you took a tax deduction for it, so you're not getting your money back. And then, of course, the uh, claims verification board for in the CVV form is all nonsense because that's sort of a catch-22. I'll give you an example that I've talked about, Jeff. Now, you're, I'm going to bounce this off you as an expert, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, I'm the Church of Scientology, and you're an expert, okay? You're an outside expert. The claims verification board form, you have to come onto Scientology premises to complete the form. Yeah, well, how could you do that if you've been declared? <laughs> Exactly. exactly. So it's to me, they're going in with willful intent to defraud somebody. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. And I think to your point, the thing we have to think about too is if you look at how Hubbard wrote in the HCOs back in the day, it was all about pricing. There was nothing about donations. He was very clear that this was a money making enterprise. So all of a sudden, you know, there's almost like a switch post. 93 or what have you. I, I'm still trying to, you know, I'm sure the, we will find it somewhere where this this light went on based on, well, maybe we need to make this, you know, cut and dry donations. And I find that interesting because I will give $10,000 in Monopoly money to somebody that's been able to walk into the Church of Scientology, any org, and go up the bridge on a suggested rational donation path without a mandated donation. Yeah. But it exposes, I mean, the thing is, it's so hypocritical and ludicrous on its face that I, I, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. So now the next question becomes, for listing Scientologists, how can I do this survey? Well, I'll tell you how. We're going to post it on the Scientology Money Project, and we're using a, a very powerful software tool called SurveyMonkey. And this is a, a very big tool that's in use by a lot of people who do surveys, SurveyMonkey. So you'll go on, it's 34 questions. We're going to ask you who, what, when, where. We're just going to get time, place, form of event, as Scientologists say. I'll also have an email address where you can email Dr. Jeff Wassel and I documents. We're very interested in collecting documents. What we're interested in doing that's never been done is see how much money is out there. I personally know people, I don't want to give a figure out, but it's in, well in excess of $2 million. Is that probably closer to $3 million in uh, repayments that have been denied? To that, Jeffrey, I want to make it real clear that we're not concerned about why you're donating. It's a question of belief versus behavior. And what I'm very keen on is a pattern of behavior to me that shows a rampant abuse of the, the, the nonprofit donation system. And I think the other thing is that uh, it's, it's constantly reiterated when we speak to folks, the pressure the undue pressure, the duress that people are put under to take out second mortgages or credit limits that they can't afford. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to lately that have been bankrupted by Scientology. And the last time I, you know, I looked, I don't hear that coming out of too many other, uh, you know, mainstream churches that one of the things that uh, you want to get out of a religious experience is financial ruin. So what we're doing here is quantifying not only the amount, but the behavior, the extent of the malfeasance that the church undertakes to get money from people. Dr. Jeff, when you look at financial criminality from a, a law enforcement perspective, why is it so important to establish behavior? Well, there's a classic thing of, uh, in, in any kind of criminal investigation, it's means, motive, and opportunity, right? And the means here is you've got people kind of ensnared in something they, they thought was a good thing that's constantly ratcheted up. And the means to do that is the, the pressure in the church, the, the processes that L. Ron Hubbard put in place to get people inculcated in the, in the mindset that this is the right thing to do, even though it's completely counterintuitive. Uh, the opportunity is you have all these events 
all these different levels, all this stuff. I mean, what church puts out price, like, you know, they have donation price sheets of how, you, how much it's going to cost to go X, Y, Z. I mean, that's crazy. And, uh, you know, the motive is money. You know, Hubbard said a long time ago that he wanted to blast his name into space. He wanted to be, you know, remembered in history. And to him at that time, money was a means to the end of doing that. But now in, Ms. Ca in, the, in the, the David Miscavige, the COB era, it's all about perpetuating the scam, really, as far as the ideal orgs, you know, donate to buy bowling trophies, all this other great stuff based on, you know, these nebulous statuses. All it's doing is going into the coffers of the church. It's not sure. doing anything that's bringing anybody any kind of spiritual or a psychological benefit that I can see. I'm not a Scientologist, so I'm not saying that anybody out there is, this is, you know, if that's your thing, that's great. But the way that it's being perpetrated to me is completely antithetical to the way the 93 Agreement was set up and also the behavior of 503Cs in general. The language of putting money on account is very misleading because... What you're actually doing is not putting money on account. You're making an irrevocable donation to the Church of Scientology. For this reason, let's say you have $50,000 on account. And you, you say, I'm no longer a Scientologist. I'm no longer interested in pursuing Scientology. I would like my money back. What, a letter you get back from the church, it will say, quote, there is no state or federal law in the United States of America that requires that a religious organization return contributions it receives. And Scientology churches have no duty or obligation under civil law to return any such contribution, unquote. Okay, so what the Church of Scientology, they will say or do anything to get your money. They will push any button, manipulate. They'll go through your parishioner folders to see what buttons you have to get you to donate money. So the Church of Scientology is a wealth extraction machine that actually psychologically targets people's vulnerabilities. Do they need help with their marriage, their career? Do they need help with their children? Are they wanting to help the world? Whatever it takes, whatever connivance or persuasional tool or even fear to get your money from you, they'll separate that and then they and they'll tell you this is for the betterment of mankind your case gain, going up the bridge, whatever, right? But Absolutely. the minute you say, look, I don't want to do this anymore. I want my 50000 back so I can start my life over. They'll say, oh, no, we have no obligation. You gave this as a gift with no expectation of return. You're not getting it back. And the purpose of the Claims of Revocation Board is for them to get you into the church to try to talk you out of it. When you decide you don't want to do it, they'll say, well, you didn't complete the Claims Verification Board. Therefore, we don't have to give you your money back. So it is, it is a scam. I'm alleging it's a fraud and a lie, and it was intentionally set up as a fraud and a lie, and that the IRS needs to become cognizant of it. So this gets to where our data is going. It's going to the IRS. We intend to collect as much data as possible. So what you'll do is you'll go to the Scientology Money Project, fill out the survey monkey. Now we have Dr. Jeff Watson, an academic, who will compile the data. And if you care to email supporting documents in PDF form to the email address we provide, please do so. If you want to set up a Dropbox that we have access to, set up your Dropbox. If it's too big to send through the email, send us the Dropbox information. We'll download the documents. So this is part, this is related to the petition I have going with 18,000 plus signatures. Because not only do I want to petition when Dr. Wassel and I and others go to the IRS, I want to have a lot of absolute concrete data to say, look, here is, pull out a number, $50 million in refund repayment requests that the church is denied. Here's the people. One of the questions, are you willing to talk to government officials? Please be willing to talk to them. If you want to be kept private, just give us the data. And so this is one of those things where we are, to use a Scientology term, raising the ethics gradient on the church for what we feel is demonstrable fraud. 
that speaks to why the IRS needs to have a hearing into revoking the Church of Scientology's 501c3 tax exemption? So I think, too, for our listeners, it's important to understand how the survey was set up. Um, it's, it's, it quantifies a variety of different data sets, as we say, um, to, um, again, going back to behavior and modus operandi and all the things that are important to establish a pattern of behavior. So the first set of questions is about you as a Scientologist, how long you were in, uh, things of uh, your your date when you left, who was your reg. We want to get down to the nitty gritty so we can start establishing an evidence trail here that there's clear complicity uh, complicity in the way the church behaves across all the orgs, across flag everywhere. Because it's there's certain you know what they call a, a nexus of criminality here that we see come up day in day out, be it on the free winds, be it at flag, uh, and other uh, you know events where people are heavily reg, heavily manipulated to. To give money and the other thing uh the next section is on regging after that we look at the refunds and repayments have you actually tried to use the process we want to quantify your success with the process what pushback you got on were you threatened with this sp declare all kinds of things which basically is a form of extortion if you're being held ransom over your belief system because you don't want your you want to get your money back that's a real problem um, and then we've got, what's the personal cost to you? We want you to quantify the damage that the amount of money that you've lost to Scientology has done to you. Again, I've heard you know, numerous tales of bankruptcies, uh, people having to you know, go into debt for no reason, uh, suicide, all kinds of stuff because people just can't face their financial future because they've given it to the Church of Scientology. That's just unacceptable. And last, um, if you're willing to, as Jeff said, engage in helping us uh, take this to the next level. So these are very, this is very serious stuff. There's a lot of things there that I think will give people peace of mind that, you know, they can quantify what happened to them. I think one of the things that I'm looking to do with this is to help people that are former Scientologists or even people that are still in have some way of feeling that they're taking action so they're not further victimized financially by Scientology. Very well said. And uh, just to clarify two things, we're not here to help you get a refund or repayment. No, for, not, for, no. We are We are not lawyers. We're not attorneys at law. If you need specific legal advice, please contact a licensed attorney in your state. This is primarily interested in U.S. residents. If you're from another country, you feel free to respond because we'd like to get the data from that. But the primary focus is U.S. citizens. However, you do not have to be a U.S. citizen to complete the survey because it, it, it all contributes because the church is, is located and headquartered here in the United States, the Church of Scientology International in Los Angeles. And again, so seek legal advice, but please help us quantify. Nothing like this has ever been done before in Scientology criticism at this high of a level. And so we urge you to please participate, contact other Scientologists who have left the church or are under the radar looking for a repayment. We will be publishing the results on the Scientology Money Project. We will be doing more podcasts. Getting slightly ahead of things, our next survey will cover R1 Religious Worker Visa Fraud by the Church of Scientology. And then it will cover Sea Org, specifically issues related to Sea Org that have been very important things that I have talked to Sea Org. I think what we really want to look at in relation to the Sea Org is the recruitment process, the, uh, again, the, the excessive pressure on signing a billion-year contract when you're underage, for instance, the uh, incipient separation of families that see the Sea Org, uh, for lack of a better process, deployment uh, mindset has. People go all over the world you know, families be damned, uh, all at the caprice of Scientology management. Uh, there's sure. also the internal abuses that go on as far as the way people are fed, housed, just the day-to-day -day existence one has in the Sea Org. We're trying and, to get a better handle on that. Sure, and there's also the abject misery of being in your 60s, in your 70s, not being able to collect Social Security, not having a pension for your old age because you joined with no expectation of money and now you're 70 years old and broke and you can't get social security and the church not taking care of elderly Sea Org members or former Sea Org members. So this is part of a, a long-term process of collecting data. And look, I want to tell listeners what I've told them forever about Scientology. There's no magic silver bullet. 
that takes out the vampire. It's methodical. It's a methodical ground game, execution, execution of plans, processes, procedures, collecting data, getting exposure. So it takes a lot of people doing a lot of things well. And, and this is why Dr. Wasson and I and myself are so excited about doing this survey is because finally we'll be able to quantify something and you'll be able to see it. So we, we appreciate very much your participation. Uh, we'll promote this widely across all the blogs, all the boards, all the usual places, Twitter, everywhere else we can. So this will get a very wide public dissemination. This data is so valuable. One thing it will do is put the light of Scientology TV. <laughs> yes, indeed. You know, all the happy faces on there. No, this is going to show what Scientology is like in real life with real empirical data. And it's not going to be uh, anecdotal. It'll be actual empirical data. And the value of that kind of empirical data, forensic evidence to the IRS is immeasurable. Well, and it goes to the heart of the matter of what Scientology has always been about is money money make more money. I mean, Hubbard said that himself. And at the end of the day, it's one thing to make enough money as a 503C per the provisos of that of that understanding with you or that your entity in the IRS. It's another thing to make orders of magnitude amounts of money far and above that that are just it's you know profit. It's nothing but profit. And more in, I think what's really going to expose is how much money is just really runs what the run rate of the church is relative to its donations and it's you know it's real estate basically it's real estate investment trust which is its you know its orgs and the IAS all these these cash mechanisms yet there's a human cost at the end of how all that cash got there and i think this is very important for people to understand, certainly the government, that this is not a free ride in Scientology. You're not, you know, that, that, that you know, Freedom Bridge is uh, awfully, awfully costly in not only money, but I think in human wreckage, emotion, time, and all things that are just unquantifiable in many ways, and that we never get back. I mean, if you look at it philosophically, yeah, you can get money back, but the time and the mental stress that this puts on you, this process of being regged all the time, uh, worrying where your paycheck's going to go, you're going to get a phone call saying, oh, you, you need to sign up for more services. What kind of light, what kind of belief system is that uh, that does that to people? Exactly, and so this will put a real human face on it, not just Absolutely. in terms of dollars, but in terms of what is the human cost, because there has been a lot of people ruined financially by Scientology. And when you're ruined financially, your life is ruined. Absolutely. You're, you're ruined personally on so many levels. So we, we, we look forward to you participating for Surviving Scientology Radio. This is your host, Jeffrey Augustine, along with my colleague, Dr. Jeff Wassel. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to your participation in our survey. And as always, we'll be in very good touch.